everyone, Joe here from Action Eggs. Welcome to What's on the Tube, or welcome back if this is your fourth high school musical, the musical of the series, season two episode review. I apologize for this episode review being late. I watched this last night at the time of this video's recording, and uh, I was, I'll be honest with you, I had a, I had a prior engagement um, to, per, to, to, to do, and I literally did not have time to do both the watch the episode and review it at the same time so i had to i decided i was gonna do when i come back but i literally came back at midnight and i was really not in the right state of mind to do the review so i said you know what i'll push it to tonight well tomorrow night so um here we go so i apologize for the delay we should be back to normal next week well next episode review uh, but for this week what was ironic is that the, the title of the episode was called The Storm, and outside my house, we were actually in the middle of a thunderstorm, which is like the most coincidental thing that has happened to me um, in my life in terms of just the stuff I review. But just focusing on this episode now, I really enjoyed it. I really did. I thought there was a couple of moments like, oh, hey, this is cool. And there's a couple of moments where I'm like, I was not expecting that, to be completely honest with you. But, um... Other than that, I still think this was another good episode overall this season. I think we are building to something, and some things I'm questioning why were they doing. And I'm pretty sure this was filmed when they come they came back from from COVID, or at least when they were more confident to shoot during COVID. So, with that being said, let's go for the butcher recap and talk about this week's episode of the show because I I feel sorry for I, I my I, here's the thing I I remember most of it, but I, I with anything that I watch. It gets very hazy the longer I wait for it, so I'm just going to get through it now. So we begin with Ricky shirtless. I was not expecting that. Uh, he's looking for his um, favorite sweater. He's looking for something. Um, he and Nini already had like a fantastic weekend together, so we're still like two days after the events of the last episode. So um, they just wrapped up their Valentine's Day weekend, and I thought like, oh man, are you serious? Are we seriously just going to get most of the season where Ricky and Nini are just not going to be in the same scene anymore? Um, to be, uh, that's what I was thinking, to be honest with you. Like, I thought COVID was going to, like, prevent them. It's like, oh, hey, we already wrote the storyline where Nini wasn't going to be there. So let's kind of keep her isolated from the rest of the cast so we don't have any sort of issues. Maybe it was a whole drama thing that happened. But if this was, um, after, after all that time, I'm pretty sure, I'm, again, I'm, I'm pretty sure they're professional actors and they're willing to put aside their differences for the show. Um, so going for, um, that, it's another sweet moment between them that, you know, Ricky doesn't want her to go, Nini doesn't want to go, but they, they, they know like, okay, Nini has to go back. She has, um, commitments, she has priorities and she just, she needs to go back regardless of how they feel and how, the, she, how left out she, she felt, feels from everyone else. Uh, but besides that, the kid, we head back to the school where, um, yeah, storms coming in, um, major snowstorms coming and, you know, everyone's just kind of like hunkering down, um, Miss Jen is apparently wanting to do some rehearsal time before the storm really hits so she doesn't take a uh, loss of the time. They're about to do this big, um, the big Be Our Guest song, which I'm assuming is the big waltz song, I believe, from the from the movie or, or the play. I really, again, I haven't seen Beauty of the Beast. Four weeks in, I haven't seen the, I haven't seen the musical. I apologize. I've been very busy. I have, I have a lot of things to do. I, I'm sorry. But, but, but besides that's the point, um, this is kind of the first time where... How do I say this um, correctly? Is This is the first time where Gina kind of like... I'm starting to really debate what we're doing with Gina. I, I, actually, no, let me, let me scratch that. Um, This is the first time where Gina's actually having a, a real conflict with someone. Because like at the start of, this, of the whole show, there was that whole thing that I was thinking that, oh, Gina is going to be like a, a Sharpay type villain. And, you know, she's going to be this kind of like a dick and trying to like scheme her way to it. That's what, that was kind of how, how the first half kind of set her up. And since then, we kind of like just been exploring this um, w this person, this character who just wants to find her identity. And this episode definitely kind of helped out with that, um, with that sort of mindset for her. As you know, n n we're officially acknowledging that, like, yeah, she's not once again the lead. She's not Belle. She's playing. I, f I forgot what she's playing, but she's playing another supporting character. Um, and in her mindset, like the only reason, and we got we got one of those like um, off camera interview segments where she says. I only took the job of co co choreographer is be because she thought that she was going to have much more control over forming the dances for the for the musical and Carlos was going to like be as a, as a minor supporting role. This was going to be her thing to like really take the cake, but Carlos has been kind of like really doing his same old 
this is what I want to do. Let's go for the, for this routine sort of thing. And she's kind of just been stuff so she gets to the background. Um, also, Gina's still feeling the embarrassment of her accidental text to Ricky. Even Ricky's making a joke out of it. Sadly, I, Ashley, I was a bit concerned because I thought we were going to have some unnecessary drama where Ashley was going to overhear these certain segments of the conversation and she would assume like, hey, is Ricky and Gina doing something else secret that we don't know about? And she was going to let Nina, Nini know and was going to create an issue. Thankfully, she's just... It's just, I, th- I feel like it was just an issue of like being left out of the conversation, that sort of thing. Um, however, before they can even, uh, also EJ is not in the room, which I was thinking like, are we seriously not gonna get EJ in this episode? Like, we don't even bother with an excuse for EJ. It's like, oh no, he's just not here. I would have been like, okay, it's a fish show. We need to write him off. But we'll, I'll get more to that in a second. Uh, however, before they can even start any sort of rehearsal type thing, um, Nini enters the room and she just wants to see everyone. And I was honestly, I was surprised. I, um, Ricky had a surprise face during that scene. I that was my my face. Like, oh shit! Apologies, my language. You actually are here in the same room with all these characters. I, I honestly thought we were gonna save you to the season finale. I'm like, oh damn! I wasn't expecting that at all. But no, she's there. She just wants to see um, them one, really one more time. She scheduled a later bus just so she can have one more hug, one more kiss with Ricky, and just to, to see the gang one more time. Because I'm assuming they did run into each other at some point during the weekend. This is like just, hey, one more time, let's just, let's just do a hug. Let's just be a group again. And um, Ricky also has the opportunity to say something again, but he doesn't. He just wants Nini to go back home, go back to Denver so she can resume studying for more professional acting than East High can offer. Well, not East High can offer. Um, however, Miss Jen kind of breaks up the, the little love, the lovely love, uh, because she just wants Ricky to go back so they can start actually rehearsing the play. Um, but Nini mentions that she has to get to the bus station, but there's something wrong. I forgot what the excuse was. Like she only has like 20 minutes. Oh yeah. She said like her bus, her later bus got canceled and she, her next bus arrives in 20 minutes. So Miss Jen wanted to be the valuable teacher here she decides to actually take nini to the uh to the bus station so that she can make her make her um bus on time so they head off while well, everyone else is kind of just like doing something else they're rehearsing the teacher that i keep forgetting his name um is in this episode there um he's just wandering the halls as always uh, and then we do get to see ej um he pops in while nini is about to leave it turns out ej is not wanting to be around anyone today because he just got rejected from Duke, which was his dream university, his dream school, and he's feeling a bit um, culture shocked is the word, like, you know, reality shock that for the last two generations of his family, they've always been Duke alumni. And now he was supposed to be like, supposedly a shoe in for Duke, and he was already picking out like meal plans, picking out like, you know, outfits, and like, you know, he's like really thinking way far ahead into the future, but he got rejected, and he's just in distraught. Like, after everything he's done, like, why was he not picked? But Nini could have really provided more advice for him other than that. Like, hopefully, this will happen for a reason, so she leaves him on that. And, uh, and then, but he, this, that doesn't really help EJ that much at all. Um, I believe we just stay in the we stay in the uh, the rehearsal room for a bit where I I think they're I think they're about to come to blows again with the our, our guest song and I believe I believe it's yeah they were both going to do um, two separate versions of our guest and they were going to like pick which one was the more better one but before Carlos was able to start his rendition of this of the dance um, the power goes out everything just goes down and finally for the love of God we finally figure out what the hell this scene was in context for. And it was just like, oh, they were just looking at a snowstorm. And I'm thinking, these high schoolers have seen nothing yet. I apologize. I'm sorry. They, they, they have seen nothing yet in life. Um, Gina goes into survival survivor mode for some reason. She's just, okay, everyone's got to find flashlights. Got to find food. Got to find water. We got to make sure we're like safe and secure. That we need, we're prepared for as long as this needs to ride to. And I'm like, it could be the FEMA training in her brain. They're like, yeah, n- disasters happen a- always around her with, her with her and her mom. So I guess she was just getting ready for that. I really don't know. But uh, that was just kind of fun just to see her go all commando and stuff like that. So they all split up to go um, figure out where the hell these supplies are. Nini and Miss Jen are kind of le- currently stuck in the snow. Uh, well, not stuck in the snow. Miss Jen has some car troubles, which kind of prevents them from moving. And also the storm's getting bad. So uh, it, uh, all this leads into... Very awkward conversation talk between Miss Jen and Nini, who 
all Miss Jane wants to know is like, hey, what do you do at school? Like, how how is this very exclusive, very specially tailored program for young, talented artists like yourself do? And she says, nothing. I now at this current time, I would be eating alone, very quietly. I would be at my room, quietly, and. You're starting to get the real, the real picture now. Yeah, Nini's not happy at the school. She really isn't. This isn't what she was hoping to, to see. And she's kind of regretting it. But Miss Jen just... I think Miss Jen does remind her, like, a little piece of advice. That apparently when she was... like, I think it was, like, probably last year in this show's timeline. That she was on a call sheet or she was auditioning for the main role... For, for a role on, the, on, music, on Frozen the Musical. And while she was waiting for a, um, a spot to audition, uh, she was comforting this little kid who was going to audition for young Elsa. And this girl threw up on her on her dress and basically made Miss Jen give up on the entire audition. And not long after, she got a call from her mom saying, Oh, hey, do you know your old um, high school um, is, hiring, is hiring for a new drama teacher right now? So that's kind of where Miss Jen kind of just like dropped everything and, you know, went there. It's like, everything happens for a reason. You know, you just know what the right path is at, at some point. Um, it does give um, Nini a little bit of context on, the, on everything going on. So back at the school, we're kind of just all split off a little bit. Like, everyone's just doing their own thing. I'm actually surprised about, about how a little bit resonant that EJ actually had. He actually had a storyline this week, which I'm like, hopefully this will lead to better things, and hopefully we can be able to pick up this trend a little bit more so. So him being rejected from Duke, he just um, walks around and just sees how much everyone else is getting into other schools they want to. Um, he's just standing by, uh, the, the teacher, I keep forgetting his name, pops in and like tells each Hey, you should head back to the, to the, uh, to the room with your other friends. Cause you know, that's literally our only source of like being together right now. However, EJ doesn't want to, cause like, he just doesn't want to be around anyone right now. Cause he, right now he's just, he feels lost. Cause the, his entire plan, his dream plan for the next four years has just now been up in the air and he doesn't know what to do next since literally I don't know what more to say. Like, he just literally does not know what to do next. And the teacher's like, look, I read your essay, man. It, it was it was a good one, but it didn't really showcase what direction you want to go in. And, which is honestly what the show is doing currently with the character up until this moment. And he brings a personal example that when he applied for Caltech back when he was a senior in high school, he got, he got rejected multiple times. And... He eventually accepted the fact that, yeah, maybe I wasn't meant for Caltech and, you know, maybe I have a reason to be here um, at the end of the line. Uh, he advised EJ to like, hey, why don't you just pop into the robotics club? We just talk, just, you know, have a casual talk. No, no, no strings attached, as, as, as the kids say nowadays. Um, but hopefully this will, this will lead to some to some idea of forming an EJ head in the future. Moving back onwards to the other to the other people's. Um, Gina, do we get? I think we got. Yeah, we got that scene first. Um, Gina is currently, she's also feeling a little bit lost about her feelings for Ricky. Because at this point, yeah, it's pretty obvious she has feelings for Ricky. That's probably going to be like the most unraced thing of the year. And she even says in the interview, like, "Hey, Ricky and Nini are happy. They're happy together. I'm happy for them. I'm happy." But in reality, she's not because she wants to be with Ricky. But there's. And I feel like we know by this point, like, multiple times, even throughout the season, like, yeah, she know she's aware that, like, yeah, Nini's kind of, like, the big factor, and, like, she's, Ricky's never gonna leave her willingly. But Gina also has to be, realize, like, yeah, I'm his friend, too, but I have feelings for him. That's not gonna go away anytime soon. So she's struggling, Even it, it makes it even more difficult when Ricky and Big Red are having a conversation about, um, Ricky wanting to send this specific test to, text to Nini, and G Gina's, like, hearing this, like, she she's basically helping the person she really liked, you know, try just make sure she's he's he's okay with his current girlfriend. And she's just feeling like very she's just not the one to like she, she thankfully acted well and like kinda like got through that situation, but when Ashley kind of like came for her, like just asked, Hey, what was up with that conversation? She was like, Bye, I'm done. I can't deal with this right now. I'm I, I just can't. Um, for Courtney and Seb, Courtney is more focused on studying for this big test tomorrow, which is like typical high school stuff. I'm like, whatever, <laughs> whatever floats their boat. Uh, poor Seb is the one being lifted up, up, up in the air, just trying to get some sort of signal or bar. I don't even know how that works. Like, 
I don't know. Like, I know, like, wouldn't it be better to just go on the top floor? Not, not like, the, the, the rooftop from HSM3, but, like, just the floor below and just, like, try your best there. Not try to, like, literally put up, put a guy on your freaking shoulders and hope to God he gets some sort of bar or something. Because, like, the moment you come down, you're going to lose that bar. So, that doesn't really make sense in my books. Uh, regardless of that being the case, I believe... Do, does everyone just head back? Um, yeah, slowly everyone starts going back to the... Um, to the to the uh, the rehearsal room, and they're just wondering where the heck uh, Gina and Carlos in Carlos is, and they're just assuming okay, they're just talking right now, they're just making up, and meanwhile they're just having an argument because why not? Uh, during the course of this argument, Gina basically um, boils down to her reason of being kind of really not in the mood right now, not, or just angry, is because she's still figuring out her place. And just everything's kind of not going the way she expected. You know, she didn't get the lead. She's not kind of the lead choreographer. And she, the person she likes doesn't like her in that way or is already taken. Like, she doesn't know where she is right now. And, like, you know, she just feels very constricted and tight. But for Carlos, like, Carlos is, like, understanding this now because in reality, he just didn't want to blow anything because he just never met someone that was into dance like he was when he, until he met Gina. That he felt very excluded. Because some of the time, like at season one, like he, I think he, I think I think he did say he really loved High School Musical one, but he just never found any, any a group of people to like really express that love until Miss Jen came along and until until eventually he met everyone else and then they just started becoming their own family. Which is sweet in my opinion, but also, yeah, he, he, he either realized like everyone is different, everyone's going to um, react to different things. And uh, yeah, when you do find someone or you do f and or find a connection that like, you know, you really resonate with, like you don't want to let it go. You don't you, you really don't want to fuck it up. So in the case for this, in this case, like Gina understands that, too. And I feel like they kind of like mutually mend the way. I don't think they I, I don't remember. If they actually decided like, hey, we're going to go with this dance or we're going to go with that. Dance. I, I completely forgot what they what they chose at the end of the day. But they eventually meet back up in in the auditorium. And also, yeah. Oh, before I forget, I forgot about uh, Nini and Miss Jen. Um, they're still stuck in the car. They're just having a girls bonding moment. It's similar to like the time where like Miss Jen ex included herself in Girls Night Out. And I'm just eye rolling my eyes. But in this t this case, they were really, it was really sweet. Because like Miss Jen was just trying to be like a, a real teacher figure to her. Like that's supporting her and giving her actual advice. And then he appreciates that, and she's slowly realizing, like, maybe I do miss my life here and not East High. Maybe I do. Um, thankfully, the tow truck comes in and manages to pl uh, plow them away. Uh, meanwhile, for back in the auditorium, it turns out Courtney's text is um, to one of the people in her pizza shop uh, in Big Red's, in Big, Big Red's Pizza. Um, actually, went, did run through, and, you know, the guy comes in, he brings in the pizza, I'm sensing a little bit of romance going on between this um, delivery boy and Courtney because, like, he actually brought her, her cards. They seem, seem to be vibing well. Kind of, like, very, like, flirting going on. It, it's nice. It's very nice. And hopefully this does lead to something down the line. And Courtney was just, like, puzzled by it, but she wasn't entire, entirely rejecting it. So uh, it's a good first step. Um, Ricky heads off to go and uh, see Nini and try to catch her at the bus station, leaving Gina kind of, like, a little bit... A little bit distraught because, like, again, you know, now nothing really happened today. Ricky's just still with Nini and, you know, she's, um, the dance thing's not entirely figured out in stone yet, so. Um, and, you know, she talks to Ashley about it and, like, Ashley's even, she's like, I don't know if I'm ready to talk about it because, like, this is, there's just too many things to, to, to go on and, like, I just don't know what to really do right now. And, but that's the honest truth. Uh, also, I, I I I love it how like the guy brought pizza for them, and then as soon as they got the pizza, the lights came back on. They were all just like ready to leave. I'm like, there's four fucking pies of pizza over there. Go eat them first, then leave. The the, the rolls will be fine, or just take a box and go. I don't, I don't I don't really care right now. I'm going through that. We get back to yeah. So Ricky surprises her at the bus station. And, and it's all very nice and sweet. I feel sorry for Nini because like, she wasn't doing anything on her phone. She was just like, you know, just sitting there waiting for the bus all alone. And Ricky comes in and she was just like, sun turned and switch. She just smiles up. She's like very happy that he's there. And um, it was very sweet. And it's still like the same thing. Like Ricky was so close to saying it. And he, Nini was like ready to hear it. But 
they, he doesn't say it, and she, he, he, um, the, her bus gets called in, so she has to head off, and the, the two like, hey, I'll see you in March. But then we get to, get to our musical number of the episode, and I forget the lyrics. I really did. I, I honestly thought that when I was hearing this, the song, I do remember myself thinking this was a really good song. I don't think it was my favorite out of the, out of the season so far, uh, but it's still a pretty good song. It, de- it definitely demonstrates to what Nini is feeling in the current moment. And eventually she just has to make that choice, like the choice that she needs to make and that she wants to make. So I believe, unless I'm forgetting anything, she heads off back to the school, sees Miss Jen and tells her, like, I'm staying. I, I don't want to go back. I I miss everyone. I want to be with everyone. And I want to continue my studies here at not East High with you. Um, teaching the way. And it was actually really sweet. Actually, um, it, it kind of... Very, very much grounded the scene, and um, before we end up the episode, um, Ricky calls in Nini finally to confess his truth. He was like, "I miss you. I want you to be in town. Like I know you're following your dream, and that's amazing. But I, I hope to God that your dream is. I hope I'm your dream so that you can stay for me." And Nini's just like, "Look, I, I, I hear you, but I'm already staying." Uh, but Ricky's just kind of still shocked and everything, so that's where the episode ends, kind of hilariously. Uh, so for me for this week, I, I was very appalled by Nini's choice to leave because I, I don't know, like I was very much expecting this board, boarding the boarding boarding school the special program storyline to last a little bit longer. I mean, we only got one real episode out of it because episode 1 was the New Year's one, Nini was just trying to just tell Ricky she was leaving, then episode 2 was her, her actually there and we were actually going to see stuff and I was like I was really hoping that we were going to get a storyline where Nini kind of inspires change and realizes that she is part of the next generation that like is really going to shake things up for this for the school episode three we just see her back in town but she doesn't really do anything it's like it th- this was an example of like covid bubble filming where like she was in, in her room and then she was at the doctor's office and she was like very isolated and i'm just thinking to myself are we this is is, is this just the rest of the season maybe the school storyline then when she ever she's conveniently back in town she just doesn't see ricky in person that's what i was thinking and then this week I was, it was nice to get to see them together again, like, on a much more friendly basis. Because like, even though, like, it's only been, like, two weeks, only two weeks since everyone else, since we haven't seen her with everyone else together in, a, in like, a while. Those two weeks did last a while for me. So when we eventually got to see her, I was like, oh, damn, this felt like a long time. It really did. But what I am appalled by is that they, they set up this storyline for the school. Not really a storyline. They were definitely just showcasing the school. Like, they definitely took, put, put time and effort out of their way to like set up this school, set up this campus, set up these characters so that maybe we can get some cool stuff down the line. But in reality, we just we never got that. I'm starting to say, like I, as much as I love the show, this was probably, I think I think this was like a little bit of a, a blunder. Since I really would have loved to see how Nini was going to like really adapt. Because it, it seemed like my, in my attitude, attitude, like she just quit because she just she missed her friends. And don't get me wrong. I would have, I miss, I would miss my friends too. But at the same time, like even she said before in, the, in this episode, she said like oh, her parents are working very hard so that they can afford this, this um, ex- expensive school. But now she quit. I'm pretty sure they're not going to get their tuition back or they're not going to get any money back because Nini left halfway through the semester. Not even halfway, probably like a third into the semester. I don't even know how they're going to react to like, I know like they're their parents, their, their parents are like, oh my God, our daughter is home. But at the same time, it's like, we wasted all that money for the school, Iha. And you just quit for, for the white guy. Uh, but 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 I, I don't know. Like, I just did not feel like that was the right move, in my opinion. I would I I knew that she was gonna eventually come back. I that was inevitable. I would have liked it if we had gotten a few more episodes in that storyline in that world before we just had that story where she comes back home for good. I mean, that's what I would have preferred. So I I definitely feel a little bit let down by that. But honestly, the rest of the episode really uh, was a good one. I'm I'm very happy EJ finally is getting something. I'm finally happy is. This gonna sustain us for the entire season, or is this like a couple episodes? Like, I don't know. I don't care. I just want him to do something, because all he's been doing is just like talking, talking, talking in the background. He needs to be doing something. Otherwise, that's real estate that you can either give to someone else, or you could probably just create a new character from scratch. 
that might sound rude a little bit. I get that. But in this day and age, you have to give these people something to do in order for them to, for, in order for us to see what the journey is, what the change is for them as a character. Um, so I'm hopeful that, that that does lead somewhere. I really hope we don't get like a love triangle between, um, Ricky and Gina. I really hope they don't try to set anything that, anything like that up because I just, I would probably be done with this show. Cause like I, we did that last season. We don't need to do it again. And I hope to God we don't do it again. So yeah, but I still really enjoyed this episode. I really did. Um, I'm honestly very surprised how like, you know, season two has been very different where like, and I think you can say the same thing with season one is that even though this is a high school musical inspired show, well, it's in, it's in the same universe somewhat, but um, you know what I mean? My last horse. Okay. Um, but I'm very surprised how this season, for, for me specifically, me watching it, is that how much the characters are starting to become their own characters and kind of sort of pull away from the tropes of High School Musical. Because it seems like that now that, you know, this is not just High School Musical, the musical of the series anymore. It's just High School Musical, the musical of the series. It's like that emphasis, like, well, we're not focusing on the legacy or trying to, like, play off the legacy of these, of these legacy characters, but instead give these characters on this show their own spin and their own energy so that they can be sustained for years to come. So, uh, with that being said, I'm very, I'm, I'm very happy with the direction they are going with the season. And I'm very happy to see that s slow pull away. Hopefully maybe we'll get back to high school musical at some point in the future. But right now I'm really enjoying it. I, I am really enjoying it. And I can't wait to see how much more they uh, improve as we are now officially a third of the way through of the season. Can't wait to see what the remaining two thirds are. Um, but with that being said, I give this episode one and three fourths thumbs up, and I think that's gonna do it for me tonight because I've been finding yawning and tired spell for the last ten minutes. So I think I'm I'm tapped out for the day. So if you're unaware, this has been What's the Two from Action X, reviewing every episode in the second season of High School Musical: The Musical: The Series. If you want to know what we're doing overall, What's the Two besides those episode reviews, we're currently doing. Nancy Drew episodes reviews for season two each and every Thursday morning after a brand new episode on Wednesday nights on the CW or free the next day on the CW app. We're also doing Walker episode reviews each and every Friday mornings after a brand new episode on Thursday nights on the CW or free the next day on the CW app. We're also doing, of course, well, we were doing Rookie, but now Rookie's done. But this coming week, we will be celebrating our 200th episode of the show. Well, actually, this is episode 199. Next time is 200. And I... Can't believe we made 200. We shot 200 episodes, and I'm very happy. I'm very am. Um, we're doing Gotham. That's the next review. So check that out on Monday. I believe it comes out. I mean, it's already edited. I think it's coming out Monday. But um, it's, it's coming next week either way. So stay tuned for that. Um, but if you don't care about High School Musical, the music of the series, then you're in luck. We'll be back next week with another episode review. Stay tuned. I don't think there'll be any sort of delays. I think I'm good next week. Uh, actually, no, wait, now that I think about it, I, actually, I think I am good, so, we'll, we'll, I'm thinking of, of, of Walker for a second, of, in terms of scheduling, so don't worry about that, but, um, again, if you're unaware, this has been What's in 2 from Action X, if you want to see more of us, please subscribe to Action X on YouTube.com, ring that bell for notification when our next episode review is live, which is normally each and every Saturday, Saturdays, Saturday mornings, sorry, um, like, favorite, share of this review if you want to, it helps us get us out there to other, other wildcats out there who have yet to discover us, as well as, it helps us beat up that YouTube background that hates me ever so much. As well as sharing is always for free. Follow the social media to stay up to date with any sort of update for the channel. And until next week, Wildcats, I'll see y'all till then. But of course, leave a comment below. What did you think of this week's episode? Let me know. I'm always down for conversation. But until then, stay safe out there. Be good to each other. I'm about to pass out because my eyes are getting heavy. But until then, peace out.